Republic of Nauru, a small but wealthy island right on the equator in the Central Pacific. The world's biggest and the first land-based OTEC pilot plant had been installed here and was in operation. In 1981, Toshiba got the chance to participate in the development of this pilot plant and received a package order from TEPSCO, Tokyo Electric Power Services Company Limited, for the plant's complete power generation system and designed and manufactured it. of the Republic of Nauru are its phosphate deposits and its national airline, Air Nauru. Phosphate is Nauru's most representative product, on the export of which the island depends for more than half of its annual income. This is a cargo liner carrying the mined phosphate overseas. Air Nauru operates the only airline network in the Central Pacific that links Nauru with the main cities of Southeast Asia, the neighboring islands, Australia and Japan. The Republic of Nauru is one of the most prosperous countries in the world, but since it is not an oil-producing country, it is very interested in developing new energy resources. Therefore, Nauru cooperated actively on the construction of this pilot plant by, for example, providing a suitable tract of land for it, and when the plant started operating successfully, it drew the admiration of the non-oil-producing island nations in the region. Now let us see how this OTEC plant actually generates electric power. Solar energy shines down brilliantly on the surface of the sea during the day, warms the surface layer of seawater and is stored there in the form of warm seawater with a temperature of about 30 degrees centigrade. This figure shows the relationship between the seawater temperatures and water depths around Nauru Island. In this case, the sunlight penetrates to warm the seawater down to a depth of only about a dozen meters at most. Below that depth, the temperature drops sharply, and at about 500 to 700 meters deep, the water temperature goes as low as 5 degrees to 8 degrees centigrade. With this OTEC system, sun-warm seawater near the surface heats and vaporizes fluorocarbon, ammonia, or some other medium with a low boiling point, which is then used to drive turbines. Then cold seawater, drawn up from depths of several hundred meters, is used to cool this vapor into liquid so that the medium can recirculate and be used again. The warm and cold water intake and discharge pipes extend through the coral reef. And here is the 100 kilowatt OTEC pilot plant, which uses the seawater drawn through these pipes to generate electricity. Toshiba planned the pilot plant according to the following basic design criteria. One, Toshiba would set up the plant not merely for demonstration purposes, but for acquirement of the data and know-how which would enable it to be designed also as a commercial plant. With these in mind, the plant's gross power output was set at 100 kilowatts. Two, the plant's net power output would be supplied to Nauru's electric power grid, and the necessary minimum output required for evaluating the plant's performance was set at 10 kilowatts. Three, Nauru is an excellent location for an OTEC plant because the temperature differences between the surface warm waters and the deeper cold waters surrounding Nauru are relatively great and because the seabed nearby has a steep inclination. But Toshiba planned the experiment so that it would not only obtain data that could be commercially applicable to an ideal location like Nauru, but also widely applicable data that could be used commercially for other sites as well. Four, with safety as the top priority, it was decided that the plant would use fluorocarbon R22 as its working fluid because it is non-toxic and non-inflammable. 
five. The power generation tests would end when all of the necessary power generation characteristics were ascertained. That is, at the end of December 1981. After that, the plant would perform heat loop tests with no power being generated in order to monitor biofouling of the heat exchangers and to check the plant's durability over all the four seasons. The research in biofouling was scheduled for January to August 1982, but the total operation time for all the tests would amount to an entire year. Here is a diagram explaining how heat is used in the OTEC plant. If the approximately 20 degrees centigrade only seawater temperature difference is used excessively for the heat exchangers, the heat drop in the turbine cycle is reduced, resulting in decreased output. In the heat exchanger as well, the distribution of the inlet and outlet seawater temperature difference and the terminal temperature difference affects the required flow rate of seawater and the required heat transfer surface area and greatly influences the economy of the plant. It would not necessarily be advisable to gain a greater overall temperature difference by drawing up colder seawater from even lower depths, because this would run up greater cold water intake piping expenses and increase the seawater pump power requirements. Before designing the individual pieces of plant equipment, Toshiba did careful research on system optimization in order to keep total construction costs, including cold water intake pipes, at a minimum, and then determine the basic specifications for such items as the inlet and outlet seawater temperature difference and the terminal temperature difference in the heat exchangers and the depths from which cold seawater should be drawn up. August 1981. One of the main pieces of the plant's equipment, the evaporator, was installed right under the scorching equator sun. is a vertically mounted type. It was transported to the site laid down on its side and then raised up at the site. Here it is being installed. and generator mounted on the same base were shipped from Japan and installed at the site. The float towing method was used to lay out the polyethylene cold water intake pipes on the seabed. Ten meter long polyethylene pipes delivered to the site were first joined together by heat fusion to form longer 50 meter long pipes. These longer pipes were further joined together on the drawing rack on the lagoon by the same method to produce even longer pipes and the resulting pipeline was fitted with floats. Finally, the pipeline was hung on the main wire and the wire was towed by the towing boat with the pipeline floating on the sea surface to be stretched out in its proper position. pipeline was drawn out completely over the ocean surface, 